yes, broadly digital advertising is down, but there's been pockets of strength in that world. What I think is going to help the weaker pockets of strength going forward. And the weaker pockets of strength to me, the, the biggest weakness has been in social advertising, Snap, mm-hmm. Pinterest, Twitter. What I think is going to help them, specifically Snap, is recent regulatory scrutiny on TikTok. So okay. TikTok, as you know, I I use TikTok. Um, <laughs> do you use TikTok? Yes, of course. Yeah. So TikTok yep. has has taken over the United States. I mean, it is the most popular social media app by far and away. You go to anybody between the ages of twenty and forty, and chances are very high that they watch a lot of TikTok. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's addicting. It's engaging. Uh, the the secret sauce there is that they were the first to sort of pioneer an interest-based search algorithm, not a social-based search algorithm. Mm-hmm. So you go on Instagram, you go on uh, Twitter, you go on Facebook, and even in Snap too. You go on those platforms, and if you don't have friends, the platforms aren't really useful, right? It's all about mm-hmm. connecting with friends and then seeing what your friends are up to, talking with your friends. But on TikTok, you, you don't need friends. I actually have a TikTok account and have zero friends on it, and it is the most entertaining platform I've ever used. Because it's an interest-based algorithm. You just scroll through Mm -hmm. videos and depending on what you watch more of, what you like, what you interact with, it registers Mm -hmm. that, feeds it into its AI recommendation algorithm, and then boom, just starts giving you content that you interact with the most that you like. So you can have no friends in the platform and Mm -hmm. still enjoy the platform tremendously. That's why it's been successful. But regardless of that, TikTok is now under the regulatory microscope of the United States government. And there mm-hmm. have been warnings of China harvesting your data. The U.S. government saying this is not a safe platform to use anymore. You have to get off it. Like we highly recommend you not getting on, you not using this platform. <laughs> the implications of that, I don't know if it's true or not. I don't want to delve into the politics of China's harvesting data, but they, they probably are. But I, <laughs> what I, what I do know is that yeah. there has been enough coverage of mm-hmm. this issue in the news that consumer behavior is going to change a little bit. You know, you go to your phone and all of a sudden you're used to, you know, scrolling to your TikTok app and you're like, maybe not. Maybe not TikTok, you know, been reading some bad things about it. I think you're going to get millions Mm -hmm. of people across America that are going to start doing that. They're going to scroll to their TikTok app and they're going to be like, maybe not. Maybe I'll try something else. So if they try something else, what what are they going to try? snap what is the okay. most the, the the closest analog to um uh to tiktok in the social media space it's not twitter sure as heck not twitter mm-hmm. definitely not facebook yep. um mm-hmm. instagram not really instagram reels stories they try to do that but not really um pinterest Mostly just reposting no. tiktoks <laughs> it's it's um yeah it's yeah exactly the instagram reels is mostly just reposted tiktoks um, it's, it's Snapchat. Snap is, is the closest analog to TikTok. So if indeed mm-hmm. over the next few months, elevated regulatory scrutiny on TikTok does lead to consumer behavior at the margin saying, maybe I won't use TikTok as much. That behavior is not mm-hmm. going to shift to going and doing things in the real world. I'm sorry. I, I'm a realist. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that consumer behavior is going to shift from one mobile app to another mobile app. So it's going to go from TikTok mm-hmm. to Snap. So I see Snap getting a big engagement tailwind over the next six months. I'm very positive on that stock. It's been beaten down. I think it is time to get right back into that name. I also think that from a broader advertising perspective, you're going to see ad budgets – continue to be under pressure for the next six months. But then after mm-hmm. that, I think in 23, you kind of get a nice rebound in advertising spending. So I think that you'd want to be in these stocks as they're getting washed out right now before that 2023 rebound. So I like the social advertising space. I think there's upside there because they've been so beaten down. There's a lot of runway for, for a rebound. Um, programmatic advertising, the Trade Desk, Pubmatic, Magnite, uh, companies like that are doing very well because that's one of the we talk about the whole space coming down but pockets of strength programmatic mm-hmm. advertising is one of those pockets of strength because it allows higher roi on spend so i mm-hmm. think that continues to succeed continues to thrive you're gonna see a lot of success from those companies but broadly speaking digital advertising we kind of 
hid for a bit. Now mm-hmm. let's poke our heads back up and, and start seeing where, 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 the, where, where the opportunities are. And right yeah. now, when I do that, the biggest opportunity I've seen digital advertising today is Snap. Thanks for watching HGI Clips. For the full episode, head on over to our sister channel at Hypergrowth Investing by clicking the link in the description or listen to the podcast on any of your favorite streaming platforms. We make new episodes every Wednesday, so make sure to check it out and subscribe to never miss any of Luke's Hypergrowth Insights.